Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today we are going to go deeper inside the explanation of how space fields work and I'm going to introduce you to how the free um, loop playback outputs work. So we're going to talk about, for example, uh, parameters like feedback, pan, um, chorus, but I'm going also to start the introduction to how things like length steps work inside the loop section and how those related to pulses for the free um, playback outputs. I hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we are inside AUM. Let's create an audio channel. Let's uh, select a grand piano as an audio unit and connect that to the AUM keyboard. And then let's also bring in our space fields audio processor like so. So we maximize the AUM keyboard and also the space fields audio processor. Right, okay, so if uh, you uh, followed the previous tutorial, you should have this uh, initialize um, preset called init. And if you uh, click some of the notes on the keyboard, you will hear, in this case, the grand piano, which I have selected. The reason that we can hear the grand piano is because we have the settings here for dry wet set to 50. That means you hear part of the dry um input audio that is coming through. If I was to set these to completely wet and press some of the notes now on the keyboard, you don't hear anything anymore. And the reason is that, of course, you, are, uh, you set it to play only wet sound, so only process sound, which means that the sound is coming from the input, going through the uh, loop section, then it's split into the three different playback outputs, which in this case have all the levels, as you can see here, up here, set to zero and therefore there is no audio going out you can increase the level of each one and you will start to hear some of the sound coming from uh, the audio input and of course you can increase it for all three outputs and you will start to probably hear some feedback as well or noise that is actually normal because it's part of the processing but for now let's work only with one of them the other reason that you, you're also hearing uh, directly um, the, the sound is because you have here mode selected direct, which in this case is not, pros is not using the loop recording in the loop section. It's not using also other parameters like the threshold here, the crossover, the transition. It's not using the pitch either for each of the output. Let me show you. If I increase slightly the level and I change the pitch, you can hear there's no uh, there's no difference in terms of the pitch itself. Okay, so let's explore other parameters. So let's increase the level here, okay? And um, then let's change to the second parameter, which is pan. So in this case, you can set it to um, have a central setting in terms it will send in, in terms of sending audio output to both channels, so to the center or to the left. Or also to the right. Okay, and I will click as always to go back to the default settings. So let's exit uh, um, uh, that uh, settings and let's go back to level. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, um, next, you have uh, a dial for uh, uh, pitch and pulses. As I mentioned, you cannot use pitch in direct mode, so I'm just going to select pulses, and I'm going to leave it there for now. It says pulses 1. Okay, and I'll come back to these in a moment. Next, we have feedback and rate, and as the name says, you can set it to have a feedback into itself, and you can set the rate or the speed of it. So let's try. So I'll increase the level again. We're going to increase the feedback now to a reasonable level, and then we're going to click on it to change to a uh, rate, and we're going to change the rate and play some notes. And of course, depending on the speed, you can have different... Uh, uh, effects and of course you can increase the duration of the feedback just um, exiting that and then uh, um, 
changing the uh, feedback here. Uh, let me show you, like that. So you can have it much longer, depending on your taste, of course. Okay, let's double click on it, and also let's reset the rate to zero and exit that as well. Next, you have a filter section, and this dial shows you the parameter you, that you can change for the filter you have selected below. In this case, is low pass, and um, you can change that to high pass, band pass, and notch. For low pass and high pass, you have a selection of frequency and resonance here. And for band pass and notch, you still have selection for frequency, but instead of resonance, of course, you have a band width. So let's try a little bit. Okay, so that is your low pass, and um, let's change the resonance as well. So you can hear that the effect of that changing as well. Okay, so let's reset that to zero. And finally below, you have a chorus effect simulating one of the famous Roland uh, chorus effect. And you, at the moment is off, click on it. You have the first preset, but you, you, you have up to four preset. And after the four pre click, of course, it goes to back to off. And it makes a great difference, by the way. And the different presets are different width and different depth, of course. So just uh, try and see with the one you like. Remember, as we explained in the first tutorial, you can see here the output when you have sound coming out because you have the this indicator here at the bottom. Also remember that in direct mode, when you have output set here, in one, um, sort of the level set for one of the output, you can also still play with the high pass filter, the saturator, and you can apply reverb, of course. So let me show you again. Of course, you can just play with this configuration, so you can have three different outputs. You can now apply different feedbacks and different uh, filters and have a nice uh, effect. So let's try. So let's say I want this type of feedback and we click on it to change the rate like so. And then on the second output, again, similar um, amount of feedback or duration, uh, a little bit more on the rate. And on the third one, we're just going similar duration of feedback, but the rate we are making a... Um, very uh, short in this case, like so. And then we, why not? Let's apply different preset for uh, the chorus for each of the output. And now let's increase the level for each one of them and then play a little bit with the filter. Why not? Let's set the second to high pass and the third one to band pass. Okay, hopefully you heard that is quite uh, uh, nice. Actually, let me go back to change preset and then back so I have the reset done um, as I need. And as you can see, it hasn't reset the position of uh, the parameter. Okay, so in this case, I'm just coming out from the selection of rate for feedback and rates parameter of each one of them. Okay, so we have explained how to use now the main controls for the output, so you know how to apply filters and also choruses as well. Now, let's go into the explanation of how to use steps, length, and also pulses. And this is uh, probably one of uh, the most complicated things for uh, this application, and um, follow through, please. And um, if that is still not clear, please leave comments and I will do my best to answer them. And also I will come back to this topic in the next tutorial when I talk about the loop recording. So uh, there are there will be plenty of tutorials that will help you to um, learn and grasp how the application works. So in this mode, direct mode, you have input coming in and go straight to the uh, free outputs. 
Now, the um, application uh, in direct mode, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't use crossover transition and threshold. So there's no threshold in terms of the audio being captured when it goes through that threshold. However, there is a, a length set in here, which is in bit, in this case is one bit, which defined the length of the cycle for that the application will use to apply effects. In this case, you can decide to change the number of steps here, and um, that will be used to divide that cycle of which the length is defined up here. The number of steps which are played for each output are defined by the number of pulses here. Okay, the way that uh, uh, space fields divide the cycle into steps is uh, by using the Euclidean rhythm algorithm. Okay, so it will do its best to spread evenly the uh, steps and the four D pulses played within the cycle for which the length has been defined up here. So to start with, let's uh, uh, keep the length uh, um, to one bit. And uh, as you can see, when the step is one and the pulses is one, there is only one step and there is only one pulse played. That means you hear just the normal sound. Oh, uh, actually, let me set these to wet. And here we go. Normal sound, all right? Now, let's say that I want to increase the number of step to, why not? Four. Okay? You see, it started, you see the cycle as well. So you can see uh, that uh, cycle has started between the three different outputs. Okay? So if I set this down to one again, there is no cycle. Uh, which is going through all the different outputs, which means you're just waiting for the audio input coming through. Again, let me try again. No more audio, like that. And as soon as you increase the steps, look, you start to see um, pulses going through or part of that cycle, of which the length is one bit at the time. is split into four different parts, and each of the different outputs is playing and number of pulses defined by this parameter here. So, when the number of steps is greater than four, then you can define how many pulses or steps are played through this parameter. So, let's try. In this case, only one pulse, okay, with that cycle. Let's increase that to two. Of course, if you hold the note, you'll have more input coming through and more a bit the four processed and divided by the four steps and the four played only in two pulses in this case. Let's increase that to three. Almost the sound, the entire cycle of what it is being processed. And of course you can go to maximal, which in this case you will never exceed the, num the maximum number of steps that you've set here. And in this case, when they are equal, it give you the same um, effect that you had um, when steps were uh, set to one. As you can see, there's no um, there's no uh, processing here in terms of pulses uh, on the first output, but there is on the other two because the number of pulses are different. They're not set to four. Indeed, if I was to uh, check the pulses on the other channel, sorry, on the other outputs, you can see they're set to one. But if I was to increase that to four, okay, that will stop the cycle, and also here, that will stop the cycle as well. So that is how it works. Of course, in this way, you can create different sounds because you are practically chopping the sounds which is coming through uh, the input. So let me increase uh, dramatically the number of steps now to 13. And let's decrease the number of pulses played. Okay, that's in, uh, interesting in terms of uh, um, type of output that you have. You can hear also that um, the, the switch between the different pulses is quite dramatic and it can create some clicks. Let's try again. That's not really nice, right? Well, you can avoid that or change that. If you go here under fade on the second parameter, you can fade the uh, uh, between steps in the four pulses being played. So let's try. 
Much better. Let's add some reverb. Of course, you can also change the length which is processed, so the length of the cycle here, so let's try that. And of course, now you can actually decide to um, bring in the other outputs and create a nice effect. So let's try. to filter change the number of steps Okay, I hope this uh, tutorial has been useful to you. We touched on different concepts. So now you have seen how to use the different outputs, the, uh, pro the default parameters of the call, or the basic parameters. We have seen also how to change the length of the cycle, which is processed, and change the number of steps as well, fade between them. And also we have seen how to apply different pulses in terms of playback. If you have any questions, please do leave comments and uh, um, I will uh, see you again and talk to you again in the next tutorial when we'll start to um, explain how the loop recorder works. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.